So from now <laughs> on, we are recording. So Erica Raven, I'm so excited that you're here with me for the uh, astrological message for this week. And I want to thank you for it, everybody. Uh, Erica Raven has been practicing divination for the last 25 years. She's a numerologist for the past 23 years. Um, she's currently living in uh, Northeastern California, and she works as a, a transformational facilitator. What she does is she supports individuals and groups through tremendous personal and professional breakthroughs. Erica, thank you for joining me here tonight. tonight today, we, like, for you, it's midnight. For me, it's <laughs> early morning. How are you? Yes, I'm wonderful. Thank you so much for having me. And um, I'm really excited to do this weekly update together. Great, awesome. great. I'm, I'm, I'm excited as well. And I just want to share with everybody that I've met Erica online. And I want to thank you for your support, Erica. And I thought it would be a great idea for you guys uh, if we, you could see a video of us together. And what I asked Erica to do is pull up a, a, a card for each day next week. And we're going to correlate the celestial occurrences with the cards that Erica pulled up. So, Erica, um, what, what kind of week was it on the cards? It was, you know, they didn't need a whole lot of prodding to pop up. And I shuffled them as they do and cleared them. And they just popped out. We got a double double card for a few days down the road but the for the full moon the first card that i pulled was the water fairy Let's the water fairy. Line this up. oh yeah we can see it very well and this card is all about uh emotions and feelings so this card uh, really reminds us to be very careful about being swept away by what we're feeling we want to take and use our emotions as a guidepost or a signpost towards what we need to move towards or what we don't want so we can know how to act accordingly. However, we want to make sure and not get swept away by them. We want to have our emotions. We don't want them to have us. So this is what that card represents. And by the way, I'm using the Avalon deck. This is my deck. It's the wisdom of Avalon. I've had it for 12 years. I love it. And it's a fantastic deck. I love so, yeah. it. The water fairy feelings and emotions which i think it's perfect for the full moon the, the full moon I mean, really that pulls correlates and draw out those completely feelings. because the, the full moon in taurus i mean full moon is all about feelings right it's about when the feelings rise the moon is in charge of feeling is in charge of water is in charge of liquids anywhere so whenever there's a full moon there's a heightening of feelings so that correlates wonderfully and the thing is about the full moon in taurus it's about knowing how to enjoy the fact that we are within a body and we have five senses that can gift us with pleasure and that we are in a material plane, that the, but yet that we should not be too much attached to those five senses, to our body or to that material plane, and that we should know that we, we are you know, a step above that. We are the driver, so to speak, of that vehicle. We are not the vehicle itself. So... That correlates with the water fairy wonderfully. What did you pull up for the fifth? Indeed. For, for the fifth, I pulled forgiveness. Wonderful. And I, I always like to give credit to my mentor who taught me that forgiveness is not a historical act. It's a commitment in the current moment not to hold anything against oneself or another. So when things come up, difficult things, memories of the past, mm. either with ourselves or in relationships with other people. It's very important to forgive and forgive and forgive. This isn't something that you can do and then it's over, you forgive it. And I think that people beat themselves up a lot about it. Why can't I forgive? Oh, you can, sweetie, but it's gonna happen again and again and again and again. So, um, That's you know, wonderful. moving so out relevant. of our emotions, so we run to forgive. So, Go when, ahead, I'm sorry. Um, no, no, I'm sorry. So definitely relevant for me in my life. And it is a powerful idea that forgiveness is like a daily plebiscite. It's not something you do once and forget about it. Can, can you uh, tell us who your mentor was? Maybe we'll give him credit. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no credit there. 
<laughs> you know, I, I took a lot of, I took a lot of teachings from uh, the Landmark Education Center, mm. um, Warner Earhart and Associates, Inc., and um, Joan Bordeaux, Jerry Candelaria, Guy Sangstock, Cheryl Jeter, um, are several of the mentors that work with this distinction. It's a very important one because it's something we all have to practice for our entire lives, Definitely. right? And it's, it's, it's very beautiful, it's profound. Definitely, thank you, thank you, Erica. So what's happening in the, in the stars and the skies on the fifth is that Mercury enters the sign of Sagittarius. And of course, Mercury is the planet of thoughts, of information, of communication, of, of navigation through our life. So all these capacities, the input and output of information and the way we think, the ideas that we produce, the words that come with them, and the way we navigate our life forward becomes much more adventurous and positive and optimistic with the sign of Sagittarius. For the next few weeks, we could feel that uplifting energy come and envelop us regarding the way we navigate and think. And it's a bit of a happy-go-lucky kind of uh, uh, energy. We need to make sure not to throw caution out the window. And we need to make sure that we are uh, keeping it real, that we are not over-expanding, over-expanding and, and, and losing our, our, our thread to reality. It's all about uh, going out of our comfort zones. It's all about walking forward and believing in the positive nature of the universe, having hope that things will turn out for the best, but it is also about making sure that things on the ground are set in a way that can support that grand idea or dream. Now, regarding forgiveness in particular, Sagittarius is about concentrating on the positive. It's about concentrating on the future, and it's about walking forward. So that's very much a part of forgiveness, and that's where I see the correlation happening. Um, Beautiful. What's happening on the 6th? <laughs> okay, so for the 6th, we have the High Priestess. Powerful card. And this is a powerful card. This is all about walking in your power. This is about integrity. Mm -hmm. This is about, well, the card itself says discernment, prescience, prophecy, and vision. When I pull this card, it reminds me to really be in my power. Remember who I said I'd be. Remember to treat myself and other people with dignity grace and respect and really own my power and um it's a it's a fantastic card it's also uh i'm i'm feeling like i want to say it's reminding us to stay butter fairy and not getting swept away we work with forgiveness to anchor ourselves in in our truth and in the, the present moment and we this lost is you like there. Can you, fully can you in your power. Your just sentences. Yeah. We lost you a little bit. Yeah. I'm just saying that this card really reminds me to step into my full presence, mm -hmm. into my full power as a woman. And there are many, many high priests, you know, so it's not just for women, but it's a call to action to step into your power and be your, your highest self. And it's a fantastic card. Wonderful, wonderful. So a sixth, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, the sixth is an important day. Um, I, I when I was looking at the sixth in a cel in cel celestial uh, eyes, I I didn't see a lot of uh, of things happening. I just saw something very sensitive happening in the evening in U.S. in the USA. So we have in the evening in the USA the moon square Chiron and opposing Saturn. And this is really a reality check for us. It's about us confronting real life and, and seeing things as they are. So that correlates with walking into our own presence, in a sense. And, and it's about being truthful, truthful regarding our own limitations and our own faults and our own hurts and our own uh, defaults and, and imperfections. And it's about working with them. It's about working with them in a way that is not too critical, that is not too judgmental, both for ourselves and for others. So what's happening on the 7th, Erica? And when we are standing in our deepest integrity, we're not critical of anyone, are we? We're not critical of ourselves or anyone. We're just, we are just in our truth. Definitely. And it's beautiful. Definitely. So, so whatever comes up, we will just do that. And then... 
before you go on to the seventh, I think what we can take from this combination of the high priestess and what I'm seeing on the sixth in the sky is that becoming um, more tolerant, more feminine, softer, more honest, you know, all, all the positive feminine attributes that, that we have in mind is a good thing for that day. And, and, and moving a bit away from masculinity into the mm -hmm. sacred uh, and a high um, priest is uh for those high priests out there that are watching you know you the best of you have full integrity in your feminine as well definitely you know you can draw that down you can be in your masculine you can be in your feminine so you can draw that down as your strength as well uh, this is isn't about our physical vessel right definitely. it's about our inner integrity and that wisdom that feminine wisdom so yeah, and it's always good when things come up, a surprise incident comes up on an evening in America, it's good to be able to get present really quickly. <laughs> uh -huh. Those things happen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, thank you <laughs> for sharing that. <clears throat> okay, what's yeah. happening on the 7th? What, what are we seeing on the 7th? Here's Georgia. Come, Georgia. You want to say hello to Erica? Da, da, da. Oh, Georgia, I wanted to see her. Yay. Well, yeah, she's <laughs> probably going to show herself. Just me out. Well, you know. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Georgia. <laughs> Georgia. Erica. So we have focus. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> Seven. Yeah. Focus. Whoa. Focus. That's what we have. So what does that have? Mean? And this is a really fantastic card. It's very simple. Cut, cut out the distractions. Cut out things that are superfluous that keep you from your vision. So if you are a drinker maybe drink a little letters, you know, really take time to get clear about what your goals are and your dreams and put some effort forth. Everyone can dream and scheme, but if we don't take an action or cut out of the distraction and invitation yeah. to focus. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. What we have on the seventh is Venus and the goddess of love, relationships, and basically satisfaction in our life. So it, it goes on on many subjects. So it's income and everything that brings in profit to our life. And of course, everything that satisfies us materialistically and emotionally. Venus goes into the sign of Scorpio. Now in the sign of Scorpio, she's very intense. She's very intense and she's very total. And when we have Venus and Scorpio, our relationships and our need for satisfaction in our life intensifies. And we can become too obsessed, we can become too total on the one hand and a not so positive side, but on the more positive side, things need to become deeper and, and more true and authentic for us within our relationships and in the way we satisfy ourselves in our lives. And we're actually heading to a very good time if we do focus on heightening satisfaction in our lives. We're going into a very good time. We are starting a conjunction between Venus and Jupiter, the Lord of the gods and a very expansive planet that ex expands everything it touches and heightens it. And that conjunction is going to be exact on the 13th of November, but we can start feeling it from the 7th onwards. This is a great time to focus on satisfaction and things that are truly important for us in our lives, both regarding income, love, relationships, or any, anything else that is important for us to feel satisfied with the fact that we're breathing on this earth at this time. And this is a time that we can expand our horizons in these Venusian subjects, that we can walk out of our comfort zone and try new things. And this is a time that our knowledge of the matter our wisdom of the matter and of how we satisfy our lives can heighten and deepen. So that's basically a good time. The only thing we should be careful from is not totally submerging ourselves again into the carnal, into the materialistic, into pleasure and losing ourselves there and becoming totally indulgent. So. Um, What's happening on the those, eighth? Those things night. can be a distraction. Definitely. <laughs> okay, so for that one, I've got, <laughs> the next card I pulled is the swan. 
-hmm. And this is a really fantastic card. The swan actually is the familiar of the high priestess, wow. right? So we had the high priestess. This is her, I don't want to say pet because that's not true. It's like, George is your familiar, right? Right. This is the, the familiar. So this is all about transformation and trusting your intuition. And so you have, you have uh, your guides and your team. You have your own best self, your intuition, and you can always send the swan down deep into the depths to pull up the wisdom that you need for any situation. So it's really important that we trust our gifts and we trust our own inner vision on this day. That's what this card shows us. I love the swan. It's a wonderful card. It's like we can really be gentle and powerful at the same time and trust our wisdom. And like I said, you can call on the swan. You can call on your guides and send that, send that familiar down into the depths of your unconscious. If you need any nourishment or you need anything, the swan is there for you. So wow. that's what that one is. Wow, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And in a way, it does correlate also with the sky. On the 8th and the 9th, we have sensitive days with a lot of lunar activity. And of course, lunar activity is about going inside into our internal world, into the world of feelings, into our internal abyss, so to speak. And we have the moon in Cancer in yep. those <laughs> days. So this is a very feminine, again, very high feminine environment and energy that envelops us that can makes us, make us a bit too emotional, that can make us a bit too melodramatic, and we have to watch out not to, again, lose ourselves within that sea of feeling. But on the 8th, we have the moon square Mars in the beginning of the day, which is a bit about challenging our emotions and not letting our emotions rule us, rule us in a way of um, either aggression or, or friction with others, or anger upon others, or just not, not letting our emotions become too sharp and hurt other people mm -hmm. in that time. And then later on, it opposes Pluto. And that's really sending the familiar into the depth, into those abyss. It's about plunging into your psyche, into your soul, and, and seeing things um, in a new light and transforming as a result of that. And of course, if we're not aware enough, this could be a time that our darkness comes out to greet us, so to speak, and that we can become obnoxious. Right. We can become not so nice to our environment and to people around us. But if we are doing conscious work, this is a time that we can understand ourselves better and actually be transformed. And on the 9th, the moon in Cancer will square Uranus in Iris. That is a day that we need to be more patient with other people around us, that we can have a shorter fuse, and there's a great need to walk forward. What did you have on the ninth, Erica? Okay, so the cards sent two out for the ninth, which I, wow. I love it when the cards so it's a powerful out day. like this. So we have, yes, we have the frog. Okay, which is a fantastic, it's about springtime, it's about cleaning up your house, getting your affairs in order, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you might want to organize your room or your kitchen or whatever's making you a little wild and crazy, clean that out, release your emotional baggage, let it go, mm -hmm. and then the other card is the mystery, which is, look, you can't wow. ever really know what's going to happen, you have no control, just trust, just trust that it's going to be okay, trust in yourself trust in your path it's already done right so you know if you if you get tripped up you can go clean out your junk drawer and breathe <laughs> right just trust the mystery that's great <laughs> that's great yeah that's great. I'm, i i take this yeah. message with both my hands clean out your junk and then just <laughs> breathe you can't control everything <laughs> Everything is laid out for you. All you need to do is keep your house in order. That's all. That's all that is asked right. from you. Right. On the 10th. I thought it was fantastic. And those cards jumped out. Exactly. They were like, we're, we're the ones. So that was really good. Do you, are the, la the next one, we have two left. Yeah. And the next one is risk. Risk. Now this, this card, this is for the 10th, I believe, right? Yes. yes. So, you know, this is more of, listen, you don't get to know right now. You don't get to know what's going to happen. You don't get to know the outcome. So this is a leap of faith. Wow. And you're pulling all of your experiences 
to this moment and you're going to take that leap. You're going to take that risk regardless of needing to know what's going to happen. Just go for it. And it might not turn out the way that you want to, and that's okay. And so it's a very potent card. And it's like, pay close attention, you know, make sure this is the right step and then be bold, take the step. So I love that one. Definitely, definitely. Me too. And again, it's very relevant for me in my life. Excuse me. And on the 10th, what we don't really have any very important celestial occurrences, but we do, we, we can start to find, to feel a, an aspect that would be exact on the 19th of November. You can start feeling it from the 10th. So I wrote it down for the 10th. And it has a lot to do with taking chances and challenging yourself. It's the beginning <laughs> of Mars squaring Pluto. Okay, now Mars is our action and our initiative and our um, will to assert our needs and our, um, no, just, just, just um, draw an X on a map and get there. And Pluto is about, you know, changes and everything we can control and all that emotional lava that that is just behind the surface, just beneath the surface and rises up every time that we challenge ourselves. And it's about powers that are greater than us. And it's about the world and and, and things that we cannot control. So not, and it's of course about the unseen. So it's about our actions and our initiative dealing with things that are not totally conscious or not totally apparent or not totally seen. And understanding that there's a there's a, a a cycle that needs to go through that we need to go under in uh, in order to actually rise up again. It's a very challenging time, and it's a time that if we're not focused and that we're, if we're not in the higher realms of our minds, we can become very aggressive and frustrated because things are not totally within our control, and we can feel that forces are sometimes opposing us or not understanding enough of what it is that we come here to bring. So it is about moving on with the things that we believe in and the things that we need to do in a way that is challenging for us, but is provides some kind of consistency. And understanding that we will be challenged along the way and that those challenges are the important stepping stones that can actually make us rise and get to be who we are uh, uh, who we need to be and, and do what we need to do. So that's how I see it correlate with risk and taking that risk because mm-hmm. it is a very challenging two weeks that we're heading into. And we can see a lot of people around us losing it, you know, and becoming too aggressive <laughs> and, and, or, or becoming a, a bit depressed or becoming just... You know, that feeling of not being sure of how things turn out and being challenged at the same time can make us erupt, can make us very emotional and not sometimes not in a very positive way when life seems so challenging. Of course, we have to see how that aspect uh, sits with your natal chart, each and every person, and then see how it works with us. But on a general manner, this is a time that things are not that sure that things can tremble and that things are in a state of evolution and that we need to challenge ourselves to walk on that next step. So that's what I see on the 10th. What do you see on the 11th? So the last card that I pulled for us is the queen. Wow. Again, some more really intense, uh, you know, feminine energy. This card is about fertility, power, sexuality, friendships, so, um, you know, it could be a very amorous time if you have a lovely woman in your life. Or a lovely man. If you man. are a lovely woman, you can really open yes. your body into your pleasure or a lovely man. Exactly. <laughs> so this is a time of gr- like being a grown woman and really enjoying what it is to be grown in the feminine and um, a very fertile, potent time. So really, it's rather a sexy card, if I may say. Yes, beautiful. Here she is again. Yes, you may. I mean, the Mars Pluto that yeah. is starting on those days is a very sexy aspect. That's 
One thing I didn't talk about that we need to be <laughs> careful, you know, all our carnal energies can erupt at that time. Thank you for reminding me. So, yeah, what else can you say about the... <laughs> I like that sex energy. Tell, tell us more. I mean, we, we're having a challenging week. I mean, some, some sexuality is not bad to, to loosen our tensions. So what's happening there? Right. This card? Well, you know, it's an interesting thing about royalty. Mm -hmm. When we study uh, history, the kings and queens of the past had a lot of servants and people to do their hair and dress them. And they were very mean to their servants sometimes. And, but really, nowadays, I see royalty as being in a position of service. Yes. If you're truly royal, you're in a position of service, you're present, kind, you have dignity and grace, respect for yourself and others. It's how you walk in the world as an example for all the people whose lives you touch. So it's very important to, for our feminine that day to just be in full integrity, enjoy it, and know that you have it, own it. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, or be of service. That's really a, like the, the best way that you can be queenly, in my view, is to be of service, be a gift to the world. If you dress yourself, be radiant as a gift. Don't dress yourself to be competitive with women. There's enough beauty for all of us. Like dress yourself and adorn yourself as a gift to the world to be radiant. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I guess that's, that's about it. That's how I see her. Wonderful. Well, um, Erica, um, First of all, you are radiant, and I, I'm sure our viewers can see that. And <laughs> Thank <laughs> for, you. For the 11, what uh, uh, is exact in the sky is that Saturn trines Uranus and creates a grand fire trine with the moon in Leo. That's a wonderful, wonderful aspect. And of course, the moon in Leo is royalty, is the queen. Oh. <laughs> Leo is the queen. Okay? <laughs> And, and we ha yeah. we're, ha we're having a grand fire trine, which is a wonderful thing just to get those energies moving, get those, uh, um, you know, all the juices bubbling and get us off our asses <laughs> and, and actually uh, walk forward in life. And that trine between Uranus and Saturn is a wonderful thing because Uranus is all about progress. It's all about, you know, Uranus is the young, um, scientist or mystic coming up to the old teacher, which is Saturn, and saying, hey, pops, you know, things need to be updated. I mean, sure, you've got enough experience to go around, but if we're not changing things, we're not walking forward. There's no progress, and some things are outdated and need to be changed. While well, Saturn makes sure that this youngster makes things as they should be done and that they truly um, hold their own, that it's not too experimental, it's not too out there, it still has a very strong grip on the uh, grounds of reality. So when these two are um, in cahoots, so to speak, you know, when they're working together, mm -hmm. uh, that's a wonderful thing because we can work uh, and, and go forward in our life in a very reasonable, but yet in a very new and adventurous manner. In a, in an experimental way that still has enough um, feasibility on the grounds of reality. So this is a great time of progress for us. And of course, the moon in Leo, right. all that queenly yeah. aspect, brings a lot of feeling and the aspect of whatever needs to, work for, to walk forward is about making our life happier, bringing that joie de vivre, waking us smiling each morning for our bed, making it count for us. It doesn't have to be important for our society or for our clan or for our group, Saturn, Uranus, again, but for ourselves, for our heart. It needs to be something that is important for us. So it's all about connecting into our own essence and, and into our own hearts That's and great. walking forward in that manner. Absolutely right. And if you're watching this, this uh, video, mm -hmm. We already know, Boaz and I already know, you have everything that you need within you. And we just want to remind you of that every week. You have it all within you. And be the light that you know you are. Radiate. Man, woman, whatever you are, just radiate. And take all those gifts and walk your path. And keep checking in with us. We love to do these videos. And, um, yeah, you know, Boaz, I really appreciate you inviting me to, to do this with I you. You're my favorite. You. 
I can't live without you every day. I, I love <laughs> so you. Uh, this is I a treat. You. Thank you. Know, you. Since the first moment I, I, I saw you on Facebook, I had this affinity to you. You know, it's like I, I felt like I know you immediately, and I'm so honored that you came online and shared your message. And please tell the viewers how they can find you online so, so they can connect with you. Well, sure. My name's Erica Raven, and Erica is spelled with a K, and Raven is R-A-E-V-N. Um, and I put a lot of um, opinion We're in posts. Okay. So prepare to be, <laughs> you may agree with me, you may not agree with me, but feel free to check out my page. You can like my page, you can friend me, and I look forward to meeting new people. Great. And you're stationed where? I'm in Northeastern California in the Grass Valley area. So pretty, you could say I'm near San Francisco. I'm originally, I grew up in the Bay Area. I just moved a bit north of there. So I'm in the Bay Area. Nice. And do you accept clients or groups as well over there? Or are you working with institutions and, uh, and uh, things like that only? Yeah, I do accept clients. There's a lot of transformation that can happen over the telephone. Mm. Um, I'm not here for, I'm not a therapist. I don't do talk therapy. If people want to work on their goals together, we'll create a, a timeline. And I expect that we would finish our goals in a particular amount of time. Um, I can do readings over the phone for people um, or right. Skype, etc. Right. So absolutely, if they just want to find Facebook, I'm happy to. Happy to work with people. Great. So, Erica, I know this is very late for you. It's like midnight, right? It's like uh, 11.30 p.m. I want to thank you again for doing this. It's, a, it's think, 12.30 tomorrow. It's, it's 12.30 <laughs> already. Oh, my God. So, I'm not going to keep you much longer. But oh, it's good. I want to tell you that I think your message this week has been really important and contributed a lot to the astrological message and provided a, a very deep a uh, 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 dimension to those celestial occurrences and I want to thank you again for doing this and I hope to see you again in my videos soon and to collaborate soon and just have a wonderful week oh anytime anytime it's a pleasure thank you thank you Erica so I'm, I'm so everybody thank you for joining us and check out Erica's page that's E-R-I-K-A-R-A-E V-E-N on Facebook and connect with her. And of course, I'm Boaz Fighter from Profiler Astrology or from BoazFighter.com. I'm an evolutionary astrologer and I want to thank you everybody for viewing and of course sharing and commenting and liking this video is a blessing. And on behalf of Georgia that just meowed on the beginning of this video, I apologize. <laughs> Have a beautiful week ahead and thank you, Erica. Have a good night and take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs> Bye, Erica.